if you try to cast someone as Harry Potter, it's not really going to be Harry Potter because Daniel Radcliffe is Harry Potter forever. All those actors and actresses did such terrific jobs in those roles. But there are so many pros where they can address so many things in the books that aren't in the movies as well as do things better in the show that are in the movies and books that they didn't do terrific in the films. I doubt that they'll ever be able to cast any of the characters better than they already did. So I think that's the biggest challenge that the production is going to face is how do you cast not just the main trio, not just Dumbledore, but all of the characters. I mean, even going to Trelawney, going to Neville, all these Bellatrix. Like, how are you going to find an actor for each of these roles? Brendan Gleeson is Mad-Eye Moody. Like, I think the strength of the, of the films most more than anything else was the strength of the casting. More credit for Dobby because he does a lot of things in the books that Neville gets credit for. The Gillyweed in Goblet oh, yeah, of Fire yeah, yeah. in the Triwizard Tournament. In the movies, Neville gives it to him because Mad-Eye Moody gives him that herbology book, but Dobby's the one who gives Harry Potter the gillyweed. Also, in the movies, Neville gets credit for discovering the Room of Requirements. Dobby's the one that suggests it to Harry when they're trying to find a place for Dumbledore's army. So they erased him. They er Dobby erased They replaced him with Neville. The number one thing they could do better, Voldemort's backstory, getting all the horcruxes as well as all the flashbacks and memories of Voldemort, of Tom Riddle in his youth, into adolescence, into adulthood, until he becomes Voldemort, until he's just disappeared for so long, coming back to Hogwarts, but also working at Borgen and Burks, and then traveling around and trying to get every Horcrux he can. Just more backstory on Tom Riddle and Voldemort. Stuff like with the Gaunts and Tom Riddle Sr., Marvolo Gaunt yeah. and his mother, and yeah. explaining about the, po the love potion that her mother had Tom Riddle Sr. under, which made him fall in love with her until she stopped giving it to him. And obviously explaining, you know, why Voldemort can never experience love is obviously because his mother hypnotized basically her his father under a love potion so he's born without love yeah so it's it's really deep emotional connection that really informs the character of Voldemort and why he's so evil and why he can never love and that's why he'll never be able to defeat Harry Potter whose greatest weapon is love another thing they can do better in the show versus the movies is the invisibility cloak we really only get to hang out the invisibility cloak here and there it's in the first one probably the most but then after that, it just pro crops up once in a while. Harry and the trio, they use the invisibility cloak quite often in the books. And it's just one of the funnest things about the series and about the gang when they're getting up to mischief and they're hiding under the invisibility cloak, going on these little missions in the middle of the night. I think they can take advantage of using the invisibility cloak a lot more often in the show. Yeah, I think it's definitely one of the strengths of Sorcerer's Stone in that effect still holds up to this day. It's one of those visual effects that still look perfect. It's simple to do. Yeah. You don't even need any crazy technology. 